It's good to see everyone this evening. Appreciate your uh, coming out and being here. You know, we live in an age of political correctness. And most of you know I've never been accused of being politically correct. I have no interest in being politically correct. But you know, I get offended. I really get offended at people always saying, I'm offended. And it offends me that they're offended. Because if you think about it, the whole idea is absurd because everybody can be offended by something. Even in the church today, take for example, if I preach on the existence of God, I may offend the atheist. You know that? It's going to hurt their feelings. If I preach that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, I'm going to offend the modernist, the Hindu, the Buddhist, the Muslim, who don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If I preach that marriage is a relationship between one man and one woman, I'm going to offend those who support same-sex marriage. And you see, we could go on and on and on with this. We couldn't preach anything to speak of without offending someone. And I guess the ultimate argument against this political correctness nonsense is look at the preaching of Jesus. Jesus offended a lot of people. Jesus was not politically correct. If he had been, he would have gotten along with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the religious leaders of his day, and he probably wouldn't have gone to the cross. Because he would have been willing to compromise. Well, you know, I, I don't want to hurt any feelings. I don't want to make any waves. And for that matter, John the Baptist wouldn't have been beheaded because he would have told Herod, well, look, far be it from me to question the relationship that you're in. And so you, you just go right ahead and we'll leave it at that. That wouldn't have bothered Herod. Look at the preaching of Paul. As you, as you travel with Paul through his missionary journeys, it seems like almost everywhere he went... <laughs> Trouble was stirred up. Why? Because of his preaching. And the very fact that we find people, false teachers being called by name in Scripture. And it's sad, but even in the church we have people say, oh, well, you, should, you should never call names. You, you might offend people. You might upset people. Beloved, we've got to get over upsetting people. We've got to forget about political correctness and we've got to preach the whole counsel of God. Somebody says, well, you may drive them away. Well, if they're lost, how can we drive them any further away? They're no more lost. They're just offended. Now, I'm not suggesting that we go out of our way to be offensive. I'm not suggesting that, that we should be just ugly in dealing with issues. But at the same time, we've got to preach the whole truth. <clears throat> we need to do it lovingly. We need to do it compassionately. And never forget that we hate the sin, but we love the sinner. There's never room for ugly or wrong attitudes in dealing with sin and with error. But at the same time, we must tell people what they need to hear. Remember what Paul told the Corinthians? Woe is me if I preach not the whole counsel of God. And so let's never hold back under the guise of what well, we want to be politically correct. We're afraid we'll offend somebody because, frankly, the truth is offensive. God's Word has always been offensive to those who were lost, to those who were in sin. Now, some will receive it and change. They will turn their lives around. But let's face it, most people don't want to be told that you are wrong, you are in sin, you are lost. And if you doubt it, just go back and read the the lives of the prophets in the Old Testament. How many of them suffered persecution and ridicule and, and sometimes were even put to death simply because they told people what they needed to hear and what the people didn't want to hear. So again, as, as we go about our daily lives, we need to be proclaiming the truth with love, but we need to be telling people what they need to hear. It's fine to talk about love. It's fine to talk about grace. and It's fine to talk about things that everybody will agree on, but we also need to tell people what they need to hear in order to be saved or what they need to hear to change their lives if they are living in sin, if they're an erring child of God. So tonight as we close our devotional, I hope you'll think about these things, but we want to extend the invitation of Christ. If you're here and you're not yet a child of God, we want to extend the invitation of Jesus Christ. 
He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that invitation to come to him is predicated upon our obedience to his will. It's not just come to him as we are and whatever we want to do. No, he has his plan. He's told us what we must do. We must hear the gospel. We must believe it. We must repent and turn from our sins. We must confess his name. He one must be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. Or perhaps as a child of God, we've not been living as we should. We've not been the Christian example that we ought to be. If you need to respond to this invitation tonight, either to become a child of God or to ask for the prayers of the church, you have the opportunity to do that while we stand and while we sing.